All right. So welcome to the seven steps to launch your business, a free community course brought to you by IMI and Play Black Wall Street. If you are watching this on the recording or if you are here live and direct, feel free to go ahead and introduce yourself, your name, the city that you are representing and your current hobby. What are you doing for, for fun? What are you doing to stay sane during these times, stay healthy, all that good stuff. Uh, a little bit of overview of what's going to happen today. We're going to go through you know, seven steps to launch, but first we're going to do an introduction to what IMI is, Institute of Melanated Innovation. We're going to go through the seven steps to launch your business, kind of bobbing and weaving through our own personal journey of Play Black Wall Street as well. We'll have a nice open Q&A session, whether you have questions about our journey, you have questions about your own personal journey, advice that you may need along the way, happy to, to give our, our wisdom. And then we are going to end off and hope that you all have an amazing and blessful weekend. All right, let's jump right into it really quickly before we get into the meat and potatoes. So Institute of Melanated Innovation. Um, my name is Devon Travell. I'm the creator of Black Wall Street, the board game. And I also serve IMI as the director of community and curriculum development. So we created IMI to do two things. One, to increase access to Black Studies courses and experiences for our K-12 community members. And two, to serve as a, a think tank, a research center focusing on solving the problems of the Black community and of the African diaspora. So definitely, if you're interested in either taking more studies courses, Mansa Musa, Queen Karafia, Mary Kenner, Mary Van Britten Brown, all the amazing innovators we've had, the Harlem Renaissance, other Black Wall Streets, um, definitely tap into IMI and look at some of the free courses and paid courses we have on there. So some components, you can log in and there's on-demand courses where you can kind of come into a portal like this with some pre-recorded courses, some pre-recorded videos and learn at your own pace with created study guides to help you with that learning. There's free live events, just like the one you are in right now. We do community courses once a month um, from health, from mental health to financial literacy to starting a business. We try to try to keep it fresh, try to keep it, uh, you know, new, new things coming in uh, to give you all great resources. We also did Black Future Month in June, where we had Black wealth, Black health, education, and Black love as well. So definitely making sure that we continue to give you some, some free positive spaces to tap into. And then long-term goal is to create an incubator space or an accelerator space to where if you have a business idea, right? And, and Nicole or whoever else is here live, feel free to put your business idea if you have one. If you have a business idea, put one in the chat so we know. But what an incubator space does is it takes your business idea, kind of like a baby, right? And it puts it in an incubator to help you grow. It puts you in a space where you can be successful, where you can learn, where you can get mentorship so that your business idea can grow. And one day we want to create an incubator space for um, black entrepreneurs as well, all right? I saw the chat. Income tax bookkeeping. Yeah, I love that you're consistent, all right? I love that you're consistent, Nicole, I love it. All right, so let's keep it going. So we have launched IMI officially. Again, you can go to imifoundation.com to check out some of our courses we have available and some of our previous live events. You can also go to June BFM com june black future month bfm to check out what events we had going on and there's access to recordings there as well all right so without further ado you know let me let this person in cool so without further ado let's go ahead and get right into it um if you're just joining us feel free to give a nice little intro um that's where my skills are. Love it. Yes, yes. Find your talents, find your gift, and then stay in that lane. Love it. Um, so again, this is a meeting. So you you y'all can have the camera on if you want to. You can stop me and turn off your mic, ask questions out loud, all of that. It can be very interactive if that's what you want to do. But we're gonna go into the seven steps to launch your business. So first off, and Nicole, I know you already put yours 
your yours in the chat, you want to create an income tax accounting business. What is your idea? And the question that we pose to our scholars in class and to whoever else may be watching is, if you knew you would be successful, right? My scholars know, know my saying, if you knew you could not fail, what business would you start? So you can go ahead and put that in the chat, whether you're here live or you're watching on the replay, put it in the comments, what business would you start? And as we're going through these seven steps, I want you to have that business, have that end goal in mind as we go through, okay? Welcome to the space, Judy, great to see you. This is kind of like a office hours for the students that are in a, the Black Business School class. This is kind of like what office hours are in college, right? You have the main lecture every single week, but then the professor also has open door policy where you can come into the office, you can ask questions, you can go over lecture notes, go over different resources. So consider, consider this scholars, if you're in the course, consider this your office hours, your university, your play, your play Black Wall Street office hours. Now, seven steps to launching, giving you a, an overview of what we're about to go over. The first step that we like to tell our scholars and business owners to take is to define a problem. Second step, like Nicole that did very well in the chat, is figure out what is your unique gift? Where are your skills? And use those skills, right? Number three is discover your audience. Who's your customer? Step four is to actually define what is the product or business that I am packaging, that I am offering, that I'm giving out to the public to solve the defined problem. Step number five is to make your business or your idea real, right? That's your MVP. And then step six and seven off to the side because they're a little bit different. And that's to create your business model figure out how you are going to make money from this amazing talent, from this skill that you have. And then number seven is go ahead and brand it, name it, right? Put, put the name on the product or put the name on the brand, all right? So we're gonna get into it. Any questions, feel free to stop me at any point. So step number one, define the problem. So for us, we, we volunteered and we worked this camp 2017 Village Nation Uni Camp. And during that camp, we, we found out that a lot of students in middle school and in college or in high school, and even, even some of the college counselors didn't know about Tulsa Black Wall Street. Personally, I didn't learn about Tulsa Black Wall Street until 2011. It might've been early 2012, but it was freshman year of college for sure. I took my first African-American studies course we had one lecture that included a little bit of Tulsa's Black Wall Street. And I think for me, I just assumed that, oh, okay, I'm learning this in history class. So other students probably learned this in history class. But my privilege was I went to college, right? I went to UC Davis. I took that AAS course. Some folks don't have the opportunity to go to college. Some folks don't take Black studies or African-American studies courses in high school, in college. So they would have never gotten access to that information. So the problem was, People don't know that we built a city. People don't know that we had a black community where the dollar circulated almost an entire year. People don't know we had an amazing black city center that had over 500 black owned businesses. And I think if you have the information, if you know that power, you can do something with it. So for us, that was the problem. So for you, define what your problem is, big or small. You know, people have trouble with their taxes. That's a problem. People have problems with, with their hair. That's a problem, right? People have issues with mental health. People have issues finding the remote. People have issues trying to stay healthy. There's all types of problems or barriers out there. You need to pick one, two, three that you are dedicated to solving, okay? Step one. Step two is find your lane figure out what makes you unique. And other than my, my corny laugh that I'm trying not to do, other than my corny laugh, I also grew up playing games, All right? Fan reunions, we played Domino, we played Spades, Monopoly was a big part of Pokemon, Digimon, like games were just a huge part of my childhood, not only for how I spent my time by myself, but also how I spent time with family, 
right? And I think that's the part that I, I wanted to, to bring home in the uniqueness was the, the family time. So for you, and the second thing is, I'm, I'm not a huge reader, right? And I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big avid reader now that I've grown into it and now that I, I can find useful information in the reading and it's not just reading what other people tell me to read, but it's reading what I think will be useful for my, my life, whether it's finances, whether it's black education, whether it's you know history, I'm able to really choose what I read and I like it now. But growing up, I was not, I was not an avid reader. So creating a game, again, was a way for me to be able to put information into something to help teach without you having to necessarily read or without you having to necessarily consciously read, okay? Um, so those are my two things. Go ahead and put inside the comments, what is your unique gift? What is your unique kind of lane that you're gonna go in? Again, for us, it was games and kind of education, making reading fun or the information within reading fun for you. What might be that uniqueness? Is it, I'm great with numbers. I love fashion, technology. I speak multiple languages. I have, I'm a mixed race, so I have a lot of different perspectives. Go ahead and put what it is. It can be literally any, any gift, any uniqueness. Um, yep, that makes reading easy when you're able to choose subjects that are beneficial. Right, right. And I think that's what I love about culturally relevant pedagogy, right? It lets you take music and make music educational. You can take uh, fashion and what you're reading in fashion and make it educational you can choose now books poetry or even music that teaches or is beneficial to the students so yeah i love being able to choose what i read all right all right let's let's hop back into it if there's any questions and i know the scholars that are in here y'all got a pitch coming up in five days i mean my math might growing saturday now the pitch is on wednesday on thursdays so you have six days all right I hope, I hope I hope you're ready, right? If y'all got questions, put the questions in the check. I'm so excited to see these pitches. So definitely make sure you ask your questions, you get your feedback, because I'm I'm ready for y'all. Ju Judy, yes, I'm ready. Nicole, I'm ready. All right, let me hop back into it. So step number three is discover your audience. Right? These are your your customers, these are your community members who are going to be supporting you. For us, we, we originally thought that our, our audience would be black families in general, right? Not thinking about income, not thinking about geographics, not even thinking about kids, what age, like we were just like, oh yeah, black families gonna love this, right? But we've discovered that it's really black families that have kids ages eight and up, right? And because kids eight and up, you're, you're getting involved in their education, you're starting to see what they're doing with their time when they're not with you, right? You may be able to play games already together. So that eight and up range, having one or even two kids was a sweet spot for us because the game can serve as a teaching tool and as a tool to bring the family together. We then realized well, after doing a little bit more, uh, more, more, more research and talking to our customers that our real main customer segment, the folks that have been rocking with us and continue to rock with us were black homeschool families. And these are families that like creating curriculum. These are families that value typically black studies and African-American studies. These are people that value creative ways of educating their children. And again, Black Wall Street, the board game, kind of checked a lot of those boxes. So we found that our, our homeschooling community and much love if you are homeschooling, we appreciate you, has definitely been rocking with us. And we've been able to build more resources around knowing that this is our customer, this is what they need. They need worksheets, they need financial terms, they need more activities to do, they need in, 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 introductory videos and all of that good stuff to supplement their educational experience. So for you, Think about either who you believe to be your customer or who has the problem that you are trying to solve. Okay, that's step one. Who has the problem that you're trying to solve? After you figure out who has the problem, what do you know 
about that person that has the problem, right? Try to try to narrow it down just a little bit. So it's there's you know small businesses that need tax advice, and there's small businesses that need tax advice in California, right? Then there's small businesses that need tax advice in California that are working from home. Then there's small businesses that need tax advice in Georgia that are working from home and are in the podcasting business, right? So again, what? how can you narrow down your audience a little bit to find this niche, to find this sweet spot of a direct customer that you can build your products around, right? As in parent engagement specialist, is my audience the parent or the kid or both? Yes, they do. Yes, so shout out to Hope School folks. Um, so parent engagement, the audience is probably parents, all right? Now, what age group? I think you said, I know in a, in a previous class, you said K through six, I think. Please correct me if I'm wrong, Judy, but I'm pretty sure you said K to six, which is a right specific segment. No? Okay, well, well, when you get a chance, feel free to let me know. But again, that narrows it down. So for anyone who's watching, make sure you're able to find your general customer segment, right? Your general market, but then narrow it down just a little bit. I don't have a specific industry as of yet. The problem is the relationship we have with taxes and financial management. Ooh, okay, hold on, no, no. Okay, so I like what you're talking here. You're talking about the relationship we have between taxes and financial management, right? Which means your, your customer segment wouldn't necessarily be someone who already has a positive, whatever that looks like, positive relationship. You're more so looking for people who are trying to build a good relationship with taxes, who maybe aren't educated on taxes and financial management, right? So that's, a, that's a particular customer that may have particular problems. Our kids lag behind, COVID is community. COVID is, a yes, agreed, agreed. All right, let's get back into it. And we'll go to step number four. Thanks for the engagement, appreciate it. Feel free to keep it coming. Step number four is you need to define what is the product that you are creating that will solve the problem. What is the service that you are giving that will solve the problem, right? And for me, this is this is kind of the fun part. This is where you get to be, be creative. You get to kind of merge what the problem is, what your unique gift is, and what the audience needs. And there can be tons of different combinations of those things, depending on what your unique gift is, right? Now, for us, our audience, we're families, our audience, was kids and the thing that we wanted to teach was history and was kind of financial management. A game was a no brainer for me. Like that was, <laughs> that was literally just the first thing I was like, boom, we are gonna make a game because I love games. It's a fun way to learn. It's a way to build habits by trying to win, trying to compete, right? And you can kind of pack more education and we did pack more education into the rule book afterwards, okay? So for us, it was it was a no brainer. We're gonna make a game. Later on, like the stuff that we're doing right here, this doesn't this didn't come about until afterwards, right? People were buying the game, they were learning some stuff from the game, but they wanted more education, and that's why you always want to keep your ear open, always want to listen to what your customers are saying, what your customers need, because doing workshops wasn't in our initial business plan if i'm being if i'll be honest like we were saying oh we're gonna sell these games but afterwards the need and the customers were saying hey we want to learn more what what can we do to learn more so and then we did playback Wall Street academy workshops and now partnering with imi to even give more information out like that okay so for you figure out what product or what service will solve the problem so if you're thinking about your relationship with taxes or your relationship with money management, all right? In my head, maybe because I'm in workshop mode, you wanna be doing workshops, right? You wanna sit people down, you wanna talk to them, you wanna understand what is your current relationship with money? What relationship do you want to have with money? And how can I help you 
get there, right? You might want some, a, a, a how-to guide, right? A nice short, maybe 10, 20 page book that walks people through how to heal their relationship with money or how to educate yourself on taxes. Um, if you're doing a parent engagement situation, again, workshops come <laughs> right to mind, but if you have a, a unique way of doing it, definitely make sure you figure out what is your gift. Like if you love music, you can do a, a parent engagement workshop to where they're doing spoken word about what they want to see in the future of their kids, right? Or you, you create a, a nice little mixtape, a nice little kind of ensemble of all these, um, all these visions and all these positive affirmations from the parents. And then now the kids can listen to what their parents are saying about them and reinforcing about them over a cool beat. Oh, with some music, maybe some dance moves, all that good stuff, right? So again, just ra random thoughts, but figure out what is the product or what is the ongoing service that I can offer that can help solve the problem, okay? And I saw the, the chat dancing a little bit. Let me go to here before I continue. Let's see, I found myself educating my tax clients. They need the education and now how to improve their relationship with money and finances. Love it, well done, well done. Um, actually birth, birth through sixth grade. Ooh, listen that. The first three years, I'm, I'm not a parent yet, but those first few years, I feel like having that village, having those parents come together, kind of like the whole mom, mommy and me or a jamboree concept, right? I love that, that would be dope. Um, but I know it's a little broad, hard to decide on eight to five year olds or K-12, good or both. Yeah, yeah, whatever rocks with you, right? I think what you need to determine is, a zero to four, that parent, that lifestyle probably looks very different than five to 10 years old, right? So you had to figure out for your unique gift and what you're going to sell them or the product that you're going to provide in order to solve the problem, that's gonna determine, I think, the age range, right? The product that you give and also the particular problem that you're trying to solve zero to four. And again, I don't have, I don't have kids yet. So y'all, y'all let me know y'all can educate me, but what, what are some of the problems parents deal with zero to four years old? We do, we're doing some live brainstorming right now. What are some of the problems that parents deal with, with a child who's zero to four? For me, I'm thinking potty training. I'm thinking sight words. I'm thinking socialization period. I'm thinking speaking, right? Those are kind of the problems or the de developmental things that I'm thinking parents are wanting to get in there. Second, I feel like zero to four for a new parent, possibly, again, not, not a parent here, but possibly you're transitioning from a individual identity to a parent identity, right? And if you if you have a couple, you're transitioning from, you know, this, this is us to this is, us as a family, what does that transition look like? There may be some some growing pains or there may be some some things you're juggling in that identity shift. So that could be another problem that you might be solving zero to four, whereas five to 10 might be a whole different set of problems which need a whole different set of products and services, okay? Something, something to think about, Judy, feel free to, to riff with me back and forth either on, on mic or you can you can type as well. I'm welcome either way. You know, let that marinate before I keep going. Cool. Cool. All right. So quick, quick little pause here to see if there's any questions. Little pause, feel free again, you can come off of mute or you can type your question inside the chat. Anything that doesn't seem clear, uh, anything you just want a little further explanation on. And I know these, these are my scholars who have already, you already saw this once. I feel like second time around, hopefully, hopefully it's getting clear the second time around. 
All right, hopefully this time you're like, oh yeah, I got that. Step one through four, psh, easy. We're good. I'm launching tomorrow. <laughs> Not quite. Okay. Um, very excited for these pitches. I am. Yes, I wanted it. I wanted to enforce reinforcement. Yes, I got you. Sometimes you gotta, you know, hear things two, three times. Love it. Um, specialize in setting up kids academically. Love it. I'm in. I'm a middle school teacher qualifier. Set my son up to get his doctorate in computer science, which he loves. Beautiful. So that's that's even a, a deeper thing right there, right? The fact that you've already helped your son get a PhD, a doctorate. How many parents want that same setup, right? So if you're in middle school right now, but you know you want to get a PhD, or your parents <laughs> know that they, they they want they want you to get a PhD or doctorate, there can be certain skills that you provide those students: writing skills, research skills, interview skills debating skills and now these become opportunities for parents to be involved in that engagement to be involved in that development with the goal being my child someday is going to get a doctorate or a phd again i'm just freestyling here you have your unique vision and your your unique talents and experiences and figure out what is the kind of way that these things can harmonize together right okay let's get back into it we got three more steps, three more steps. Step five, the, you know, I don't know if this is the hardest step, but I think it's one of the steps that is the most challenging because everything before this is thinking, right? Everything before this is maybe writing stuff down. It can be just literally internal thoughts that you're having. But now with the MVP, you got to put in a little action, right? You got to put in a little bit of work to take this idea and put it into the world as an MVP. And for the scholars, I know y'all know what MVP stands for. Go ahead and put inside the chat what MVP stands for. For the other folks that are watching the replay, feel free to, to comment in the, in, the, in the comments or in the chat. Um, but yeah, what does MVP stand for? I'm gonna wait for it. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that in the air. What does it stand for? I'll come back to the definition after some folks put in their guesses. But our first edition, and you can see it in the top left-hand corner. Our first edition was a cardboard box, All right? We put markers in it, a little, little, little bit of ruler to get some straight lines. We used PowerPoint for our draw cards and we were able to see, okay, this idea of putting the history of Black Wall Street into a game, it can work. This idea can work. So, and then we invested, you know, $15 <laughs> and we uh, got another cardboard box. And then we went to Walmart and printed an actual design. And that's the top right hand circle that you see. Right. So it's like, okay, we're getting a little bit better. We got some designs, we got some color, right? We got words on the board. We thought we was doing something, right? Now, what I think folks need to realize is you're talented, you have gifts, you are a brilliant person, hands down. That doesn't mean you have all the gifts, right? That doesn't mean that you can do everything that is needed to get your job or to get the job done, right? So for us, I needed to, to tap in on somebody because I, I can't draw, I'm, I'm not an artist and I, I could, you know, I could learn, I could definitely do that, but that's not my gift. So I, I tapped in with someone else, my brother, Markel, who's great, phenomenal, gifted with graphic design. And he was able to join the team and then take the two MVPs, right? We can show him here, this is the vision. This is what we wanna do. Please make this real, make this into the, the prototype. So then he was able to create the boards that you see down there, okay? So don't be afraid to bring in other people, create your MVP of, what you can do with the resources and with the gifts that you have. But once you realize, hmm, I need a graphic designer. Hmm, I need a public speaker. Hmm, I need someone to do my taxes. Hmm, I need a, a, a workshop leader to talk to parents. You then can bring in other people to help take your vision and business to the next level, all right? But it all starts with that first MVP, which 
Nicole put in the chat, minimum viable product, all right? Minimum viable product. That's my MVP, minimum viable product. That's my MVP, minimum eh, viable product. That's my MVP, all right? Ditto, I see you, Judy. <laughs> all right, so one more time before I leave, before I leave this slide, I'm not just gonna jump out the, <laughs> the class now. Um, this is not meant to be perfect. Okay, your first product, the first service that you provide does not have to be perfect. Like Judy just said, it's a prototype, right? This is just something to make your idea real and you can continue to improve upon this MVP or improve upon this prototype, right? Now, step six, pick a business model. And we went into details in this in class. I'm not gonna go over the details in this one, but I, I like business models. We can do a whole nother community course or a, a course in IMI all about business models. But these are the five kind of most, most widely used and successful business models. There's business to customer where you're selling directly to the customer, business to business where you're selling to big businesses like schools, Walmart, Target, Amazon. There's subscription where every single month your customer is paying for a service and you're collecting that money every single month. There's freemium where you give some stuff for free, some stuff for a freemium. I mean, for premium, you put it together, that's a freemium, all right? And there's also user generated like social media where the community itself is generating the products or generating the service. So pick one to two. You can do more, but I think especially starting off, you want to pick one, grow into two, and then as things progress, you know, you can grow accordingly. For us, we started off business to customer, right? Selling the board game, you know, out, out of our car, selling the board game at, at swap me, selling the board game at events online directly to the customer. We also started off and we still are in the freemium model, right? Where we have free workshops just like this and, and other ones that we do where people can come get the get the knowledge get get inspired and go off and take action but then we also have our premium stuff or the stuff that is paid like our partnership with the black business school like play black wall street academy and some other courses where people can pay for that service and sometimes a little bit added value right so for us we're, we're pretty comfortable in our business to customer and our freemium but highly encourage you to look at other business models as well all right so for our scholars that are in here feel free to put the business model that you are considering inside of the chat and we can uh yeah i feel like i know it i, th I think i remember from from the course but go ahead and put it inside the chat now last one the last thing you do is name the brand name the business and people might be like devon why would I name it last? When a baby comes out, that's one of the first things you do, you name it. Well, I mean, that's not what everybody does, but why would I wait to do all that work before I name the brand? So uh, I'll tell you a story, <laughs> right? I like I like showing you the, the, the mistakes that we've made. So the first brand, first business that we started, me and the queen was True Health Forever, TH4. And that brand was built on holistic health. We saw in our families that, you know, people were, were going on for glory and dying too, too soon, or at least in our opinion, way too soon. Uh, we saw, you know, heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, all of those diseases within our family. And we wanted to figure out how can we change the trajectory of our family, right? Us, our kids, our kids' kids, how can we start changing habits for us and other people as well? So we started True Health Forever focusing in on social health, physical health, spiritual health, and economic health, right? Black Wall Street, the board game, was one of our first businesses, or our first product, rather, that was supporting economic health for the families, for the community. And we had our, we had our Instagram True Health Forever, we had our website True Health Forever, and then we were selling Black Wall Street the board game. We thought, yes, we, we got this, we're gonna do it. It, it makes sense. <laughs> Y'all. So unfortunately, and I mean, in hindsight, it, it, I understand, 
but a lot of our customers who didn't know our mission, who didn't know our vision, who didn't know how a board game supports health, they were confused, right? They were like, uh, is this a health company or is this a board game company? Uh, is this a scam? I paid for Black Wall Street, the board game, but I see True Off Forever on my credit card statement. I'm, I'm rebuting that, I'm disputing that, right? So we then had to, all right, let's, let's circle back, right? Our customers, our Black families, our customers, our people with kids, our customers are people who like to play games, but also want education. Our customers are seeking history and knowledge about Black Wall Street, boom. Our brand for this product line is Play Black Wall Street. We rebranded, right? We still have True Forever, but we rebranded this section of our business, started a, a playblackwallstreet.com website, a Play Black Wall Street Instagram, and we were able to get more traction because the brand matched the product and it matched the intention and perception of the audience. All right. So for you, that's why we name it last, because after you know who your audience is, after you know what product you're giving, after you know the problem you're solving, after you know all these things, you can make a better informed decision on the brand name that makes sense. Cool. Hopefully that make that story made sense. You know, definitely learn from our, our L's, learn from our lessons. Um, isn't freemium kind of a prerequisite to a business? Great question, Judy. Is freemium a prerequisite to a business? It can be, but some businesses have that as their model, right? So some people like you can start off with like free samples at Costco, right? You Hot Pockets isn't the one giving out the free samples. Costco's giving the free samples, right? But other people can do free giveaways and they can do other things as marketing, but YouTube, is free period right it, it's free it's part of the culture but if you want no ads if you want to download stuff if you want you know extra features then you pay right I'm trying to think of another example of a good freemium model there's me there's i think there's music maybe no spotify you pay for it straight up um let's see instagram is free but if you want ads, you got to pay. Maybe, maybe that's not maybe that's not a good example. I'm trying to think of another good example of freemium. Feel free if y'all got a good example, put in the interesting. Never heard of that before. Name last. Yes, Judy. We go ahead and do it. Do it last, just to make sure the name, because you can create a name, but what are you using to to make the name, right? Like I think even when when you think about it, when you name an idea you've at least come up with what the idea is, what the business is, and then you come up with the brand. You don't just say Eureka and then make the business based off of the name, right? <laughs> or maybe you do, I, I don't, I'm not sure. But for us, these are our, our seven steps that now that we have started, you know, two businesses, these are the steps that I think are repeatable and that have worked at least in some form or fashion for us, right? Um, definitely always open to getting more information, other people's perspective, but these are the seven steps that after stumbling along have, have worked out for us pretty well, okay? Freemium, okay, clear. Cool, glad that I was able to, to help it out. All right, let's go back into it. Those are the seven steps. Quick little refresher. Again, you're gonna define the problem. Then you're gonna figure out your unique gift what makes you special in this market. You're gonna find who is your audience or who has the problem you were trying to solve. You're going to define the product or service that you want to solve the problem. You're, you're gonna make it real, right? MVP, minimum viable product. You're gonna make your idea real. You're gonna get some feedback and you're going to possibly reach out to other people who can, who can help you make the idea better. You're then going to create your business model and figure out how am I going to make money? How am I going to be successful in this industry? And then after all of that, you are going to put a beautiful, nice little ribbon on it, right? You put a little stamp on it and say, this is my brand. This is my business, all right? 
go ahead and put inside the chat which step you can put yeah go ahead and type it out or put a one through seven which step are you looking forward to all right which step do you think is going to be the most fun i like that question better which step do you think is going to be the most fun or enjoyable for you cool um so really quickly and i know my, my scholars already went through this but I, I like these examples these are all businesses that are solving the same problem but they all solve them differently right so access to media or entertainment right wanting to be entertained is a problem that needs to constantly be solved so youtube solved that problem by uploading free music free videos onto this platform for anyone to consume on the internet but your screen has to be active <laughs> <laughs> right. Spotify saw that problem in a subscription base where you can pay every single month for this access. You can have it offline. You can download, you can favorite, create playlists, but it's only music, no videos. Instagram, complete free access, but you only have access to pictures that people upload or videos that people upload and you got to follow them. Right. So everything is a little bit different, but at the end of the day, it's the same problem. The point of this slide is to show you that there's multiple ways to skin a cat. And for, for our, our animal lovers on there, there's multiple ways to get to a destination, right? You put in a destination in Google Maps or in Waze, it'll, it'll reroute you, it'll show you multiple ways to get there. So if you're looking out there and there's already a business that does something similar to what you wanna do, or you, you define the problem and you see that there's already a business that solves that problem, that does not mean that you as your unique brilliant self can't still solve that problem right you just have to do it in a little bit of a different way let's keep it going one more example audiences and i already said this in class but y'all can feel free to to put it in the comments what's the difference between the the values or the character of someone who eats at mcdonald's seven days a week no shade. I used to work at McDonald's versus someone who eats Weight Watchers seven days a week. What might be the difference in that person's habits, their lifestyles or their values? All right. And someone said their favorite or Judy said their favorite would be step five, which is creating the MVP. Yes. Cool. Um, so for me, the difference between someone who would go to McDonald's seven days a week versus someone who would go to uh, Weight Watchers and Nicole went in and put it in the chat, health, all right? Someone who's going to McDonald's seven days a week probably isn't hyper-focused on their health, all right? They may be hyper-focused on, I need to get food as soon as possible. I need to feed as many people as soon as possible for as little money as possible, right? Versus someone who's on Weight Watchers. I mean, it kind of says it in the title, right? They're, they're, they're watching their weight. So they, they are being actively conscious of their health with all their meals and they're willing to pay for that inconvenience or pay for that value of health, okay? So even though you can be in the food industry, even though you can be in the parent engagement industry, even though you can be in the tax industry, who your audience is in the market will determine the values of the business and the products of that business, all right? or vice versa, the products and the values of the business will determine who in the market, who in the general customer scheme will be your particular segment and dedicated customer, all right? So as you're thinking about your business, try to think about the values, try to think about the habits, try to think about the concerns and the, the psychology of the people that you want to be using your business every month, every week, every day, all right? Yes, quality, usually healthier, price, quality, and availability. I see you, Judy. Okay, so hopefully th this was clear for you. If you have a business out there already, or if you're thinking about starting a business, launch it, right? Follow this guideline, follow these seven steps. Um, obviously, there's other steps you need to do. Get a seller's permit, you know, get your LLC, start your website. There's some other, you know, steps 
that we didn't talk about in here. But if you're just thinking, all right, how do I get from idea to a physical product and a business model? These are your seven steps to get to that point. And then later on, you can do the, the legal steps. You can talk to Nicole, get the tax steps done, all of that good stuff, okay? Um, but if you wanna stay connected with Play Black Wall Street, on our Instagram, you can follow us, Play Black Wall Street. We do have our YouTube channel where, we, where we'll post this and other free content as well. Freemium model, right, Judy? Um, but you can go to Play Black Wall Street on YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe there. And then, of course, you can head to our website to purchase Black Wall Street, the board game. This swag T-shirt that just got released today. We haven't even promoted it yet. But if you look closely, it says Make America Remember. And when we went to Tulsa, we were able to meet two of the three living survivors of the Tulsa massacre. We met Mother Fletcher, we met Uncle Red. We didn't have the, the privilege of meeting Ms. Ms. Randall because she was feeling a little under the weather during that day, but we were able to partner with them. And now we have these shirts available on the website, Make America Remember. Um, and we have a few other ones as well. So head to playbackwallstreet.com and check out what we got in store for you. Yes, agree. America needs to remember, right? And some some of America needs to learn it in the, in the first place, right? It's not even about remembering; they need to relearn relearn it. But others have tried to forget it. All right. So, takeaways: number one, be the solution. All right. Entrepreneurship is about problem solving, big or small. Define a problem and use your uniqueness, use your powers, use who you are as a person to solve those problems number two is to start right nobody starts off perfect right mark zuckerberg didn't start facebook off perfect uh you know jay-z's bars and beyonce's bars weren't weren't the greatest when they first got started but they kept going for years years and now 20 years later 30 years later we see the amazing empire that a lot of people were able to build so get started and keep on going launch your business with the intention of getting better every single day and then lastly feedback i, I know it can be a little little scary right a little, little anxious to share your idea with somebody because you don't want them to steal the idea or you just maybe aren't in a position where you want criticism for the idea yet but put your idea out there whether it's with your parents a friend a colleague talk about the idea get some feedback because at the end of the day, nobody can produce the vision that you have with the talent that you have the way that you're going to do it, right? So they, they, they may, worst case scenario, if they take your idea and they, they make a board game built on the history of Tulsa Black Wall Street, doesn't mean they're, they're going to make it the way that Devon would make it. Doesn't mean that they'll put the history that Devon put into it. Doesn't mean that they'll put the education inside the study guide the way that Devon put the education in the study guide. Right, so I, I would hope that your, your idea doesn't get stolen, but even if for whatever reason it does, just know the way that you're going to execute, the way that you envision that product or that service can only be done, can only be performed by you. So don't, don't be afraid, talk to people, talk to people you trust to even you know minimize that even more, but that feedback is key in launching that successful business. All right, beautiful people. So feel free if you have questions, you can put your questions inside of the chat or you can come off of mute. You can say your questions out loud, but we appreciate you for attending today's free community course. If you wanna learn more about Tulsa's Black Wall Street or you just wanna get tapped in with Play Black Wall Street, you can follow us on Instagram, Play Black Wall Street. You can also follow I, the letter M, I, I, M, I, Institute of Melanate Innovation. I am I Black Studies on Instagram as well. We will post more courses on there. We will post more Black Studies and histories and all that good stuff. And then if you like what you heard today and you want to get more Black Studies, if you want to get more stuff about the boys and Booker T. Washington, Mansa Musa, Queen Calafia, learn about Mary Van Britten Brown, learn about the other Black Wall Streets in our history, you can go to imifoundation.com and register for some of our free or some of our paid courses on there, okay? So I appreciate y'all. I'm going to stop sharing and see if there's any questions. If not, class will be dismissed shortly. Thank you for the deeper dive on the seven steps. Of course, Judy. Look, Judy, I'm ready. 
for your pitch on Wednesday. Get ready. I'm ready for it. I want to see it. Okay. But thanks for coming in and getting the extra wisdom. <laughs> You're laughing, but I'm ready. I'm 100% ready. Okay. Um, but if there's no more questions, I'll give it maybe 10, 15 seconds. Of course, Nicole, thanks for coming through. I know you, you didn't raise your hand in class, but I hope hopefully the second Second wave, the second dose got you a little bit motivated to present. I'm, 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 I'm hoping we, we can push you towards the, the awesome seat. She's like, nah, I'm an introvert, bro. <laughs> I'm good off that camera. Uh, if you are introvert, you don't even have to be on camera, right? Have your presentation. So your presentation does the talking for you. Come off of mute and just talk through your presentation, right? Mark Zuckerberg is also an introvert, but he was able to, to still highlight his, his brilliance through other ways, right? So Nicole, definitely understand if you want, if you don't want to be on camera, but we would love to hear your brilliance or love to see your brilliance if, if you would honor us, all right? So again, much appreciate. I'm going to stop this recording. Make sure y'all stay healthy. Make sure y'all stay wealthy out there and stay true to the vision, stay true to the dreams. Peace, y'all.